There is this misconception I hear all the time that is total BS and it's not fair. And that belief system, that perception is that people who are successful or people who are high level entrepreneurs or CEOs or executives, they don't get stressed out. What do they have to get stressed about? And I'm gonna share with you in this video. Hi, if you're new to me, my name is Dan Kendall. I'm known worldwide as the Anxiety Relief Guy, and I specialize in helping high-level entrepreneurs, executives, and CEOs break free from that mental battle of constant stress and that low-level anxiety. And I help people feel more inner peace, more balance, and also more presence, both personally and professionally. I help people get off their struggle bus on the next stop. <laughs> so that way they don't even have to stay on that bus. So here's what happens. Uh, we are conditioned from a very young age to believe that people who are successful and who have achieved great things should not be stressed. And the opposite is actually true. People who are more successful, people who are in really high power positions or people who are high level successful entrepreneurs, CEOs, executives, they get even more stressed out at times because they experience even more pressure and they have even more responsibilities and even more pressure to perform. Now, I'm not saying that a person with a regular nine to five job doesn't have stress. I'm not saying that people who don't have a professional life or don't have jobs don't get stressed. But what I'm saying is that it is completely unfair to say that people who are more uh, successful and I'm not just talking about monetary wise I'm talking about whatever success means for that person or whatever success means for you it doesn't make sense and it's not fair to say that people who are more successful don't get stressed out or they shouldn't have problems they have problems they just have different problems in fact oftentimes what some people would consider challenges when those small challenges happen for an entrepreneur or for an executive or for a CEO, guess what? It's even more of a challenge. And when they experience a personal struggle or a personal challenge, it shakes them up even more and they feel really, really scattered and they're not able to be present in their business. And that carries over to the professional life even more. And it's cyclical. It's like one hand washes the other. I know for me, um, I've built a really good, really good business. And I built a really good practice where I was seeing six to 10 people a day, five days a week, right here in my office, right here in my office. That chair right, right there, I always call the magic chair of change. And I got to the point where I started to get overwhelmed and then one problem happened in my life. One problem happened in my life that required my time and attention. And it was really difficult to split my time and attention between my business, my clients, and my personal life. And the stuff that was happening in my personal life was really, really heavy that I had to attend to. And I felt pulled and I felt this internal struggle. I felt conflict. I felt confused. And this happens so much with people who've built up really good businesses for themselves. And then it's hard to navigate through those challenges because people feel, they literally feel pulled apart. They feel like an anxious ball of twine that's so tightly wound, it's like, it seems impossible to unravel. Now, what do people do usually at that point in time? People will sometimes just call their doctor and say, hey, I'm dealing with a difficult time, give me a pill. And the doctor will just <laughs> pop them a medication and say, here, take this to deal with this difficult time in your life. And then what happens? Their mind and their body, it gets used to that medication. And then when that difficult time is over, many people feel like they can't come off those medications because their mind and body has gotten used to them. What's another thing that happens? Another thing that happens is that a person will experience a challenge in their personal life and they feel pulled away from their business or a challenge will happen in their business, they feel pulled away from their family, they can't be present, and they'll go talk to a therapist. And now, I love therapy. I am a big fan of therapy, depending on how therapy is working for that person, depending on the, the, the methods of therapy, 
Um, I'm right now in pursuit of my PhD um, in psychology. So, so I, I see all different aspects of it. But sometimes, depending on the therapist and depending on the method of therapy, a person is dealing with this challenge right now that they need help with. And they go to a therapist and the therapist will say, okay, tell me about your childhood. And let's talk about your relationship with your parents. And let's talk about what happened in grade school. And oftentimes people feel really discouraged. Now I'm not saying all therapists do that. I'm not saying all therapy is like that. Um, it's not, but a lot of therapy is where they're focusing on the past and how the past influenced the future. And it takes a really long time to see results in the present by continuing to revisit the past. Um, what do we do instead? Well, instead, and this is why people have gone to, and again, I'm not saying therapy doesn't work. I'm a fan of therapy. I love therapy. Um, yet it can sometimes take a long time to start seeing results. Why is it that people will join a program that I do and they'll start noticing results within just a matter of like a couple of weeks? The reason is, is that we're doing deep inner work, but we're doing it in a more expedient way. And I'm also teaching people how to think and how to change the way they feel and how to change the way they respond and behave by making a few little adjustments mentally, physically, and emotionally. And you'd be really surprised. Like one of them, for example, a client uh, just reached out to me who's in my group program and she said, I work with people all the time. And she's like, I work with people one-on-one -on -one like you used to do. And she said, when I, when I work with like six or eight people a day, I just feel charged up, but not in a good way. And what's, what's a way that I can just like unwind? And what I did is I taught her a way to condition herself that when she walks out of her office, she holds on to the door frame of her office she closes her eyes and she just counts backwards slowly from 10 down to one. She imagines a giant shower drain beneath her feet and all the energy from the day draining out of her and down the shower drain. Guess what? That works because we've conditioned that response and it can sometimes take weeks to condition a response. But when you use subconscious techniques, you can condition a response in literally just a couple of minutes. So a big part of what I'm helping people do is I'm helping people condition certain thought patterns, feeling patterns, and sensations into their body that they can keep going because they keep reinforcing them. Um, I said in one of my last videos that anything that you wanna keep going has to be maintained. And I gave the example, if you want to maintain being overweight, you, you keep eating unhealthy foods. Um, if you want to maintain feeling miserable, you keep thinking miserable thoughts and you keep hanging around with miserable people and you keep doing miserable things. And for example, one of those things is like the news and the media because the news and the media found out that it gets more views if they talk about problems, if they talk about negative things. Very rarely will you see anything positive on news stations. Now, I'm not here to get into any political debate or argument. If that's your intention after hearing me say that, go somewhere else. Um, I go focus on that. My purpose in sharing that with you is um, what happens oftentimes is people who feel more aggravated, people who feel frustrated, who feel angry, they keep themselves maintained in this confinement of things that are going to make them angry, of things that are going to make them emotional, things that are gonna make them sad. Perfect example, several years ago when I went through a really brutal breakup, I listened to gut-wrenching, heartbreaking music and love songs that would just make me cry when I was driving. I was so depressed and I was like, oh my gosh, why am I not feeling better? Like that I should, feeling, I should be feeling better right now. And <laughs> I looked at my playlist I was listening to, I'm like, holy crap, I'm like this is really depressing stuff. <laughs> so I maintained that, that emotional, that visceral emotional <laughs> response, even though I know this, or even though I teach this to people, I was unaware that I was maintaining that emotional response by maintaining 
listening to gut-wrenching stuff. And if you really want to change some of the patterns and some of the thoughts and some of the feelings and some of the emotions, we just have to make a couple little adjustments here or there. And a realization that really helps people shift is that you are actually in control of how you feel. Now, you're not necessarily in control of how you think, but you are in control or what thoughts you have, but you are in control of how you perceive them and how you interpret them. People who produce at a higher level, people who are really high achievers, uh, they have a lot of the same struggles that everybody else has. They just have more pressure and sometimes they try and push those struggles away. Sometimes they try and avoid them. But just like a signal on your car that tells you, oh, hey, I really need to get my car serviced. If you ignore that signal, your car is going to break down. And the same thing is true. When we start ignoring our emotions, when we start pushing back our feelings, they're telling us like danger, danger, danger. Oftentimes, we will have a mental breakdown. So with that said, if you want to prevent a mental breakdown. If you want to have more breakthroughs instead of a breakdowns, I highly recommend you reach out because this is something that I can help you with very, very quickly in the form of usually about six to eight weeks. The great thing is the people who go through my program, they find it so useful uh, that they also find benefit in continuing with the program in some way. So we do have some maintenance programs as well for you too. Um, if you need help, making more breakthroughs instead of having breakdowns, reach out to my team. Their calendar should be right below. As always, be well, do good, be true to who you are, and happy healing. Thanks for joining me on the Anxiety Relief Revolution. Make sure you follow me on TikTok at Anxiety Relief Guy and on Instagram at Dan Candell. If you watch this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, comment, and hit that like button. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, Make sure you subscribe and leave a five-star review. It helps me help you and help more people. And as always, be well, do good, and be true to who you are.